Dangerous drugs and defiance against authority, a deadly combination that also plays out across Montana. The State Department of Justice says there have been 37 officer-involved shootings in Montana over the past six years. Here in Billings, four last year alone. Do you think cops are too quick to pull the trigger? A debate that's playing out on social media, on television, and in courtrooms across the country. For transparency, those who do not know, my husband is an officer of the law. But I, too, have questions. So we set out to find some answers and bring some clarity and understanding about what's behind an officer's life or death decision. These are some of the most stressful events that a person will ever experience in their life. The fundamentals of what they're doing with that firearm has got to be a reflex. Officers are often forced to enter volatile situations with little information. Their ultimate goal, to stop the threat with the least amount of force. This job is all about decision making. And in that split second, they're making a decision whether to use deadly force. Time and time again, in today's world of law enforcement, Chief Rich St. John says these situations have drastically escalated. Law enforcement officers are interjected into some, some very, very serious and dangerous situations. Add in alcohol, paranoia and irrational behavior from drugs, and suspects wielding weapons. And not only just knives and handguns, but anymore we're starting to experience uh, high-powered rifles and, and assault-type weapons. You really have a culture of anti-law enforcement sentiment, uh, specifically anti-authority, and people just won't listen or do uh, what police officers order them to do. It is absolutely a traumatic event for these officers. It's not that they are just out there shooting people because somebody pointed a gun at them. They are a victim of violent crime and they were, uh, they were had to defend themselves. In their training, the officers are taught there's no downtime, there's no off time, and there's no spare time. All there is is lifetime. And for that, every second counts. If I can get a second, that's better than a half a second. If I can get three seconds, I can make a better, more informed decision about what's going on. If I've used the distance properly, used my training, and I've, now I've got three seconds to realize that is not a gun, that's a cell phone, and I'm not going to employ deadly force. And those are situations we run into every day. But sometimes officers don't get that time. Last spring, after negotiations on the rims, a standoff with a 30-year-old Billings man ended when he lifted his gun and fired the first shot. In that situation, you saw um, uh, a very, very, uh, very, very highly trained and disciplined group of officers. I think there were several cases or several times during that incident when um, the officers would have been justified to use deadly force, and they did not. An officer involved shooting fatality is no badge of honor. We spoke with a Billings police officer who did not want to appear on camera, but shared with us that there's no glory in taking a life. He told me, all that training comes down in one second. I see his arms start to come up. I see my sights and his shirt, and then it just sounded like a roar. You don't want it to end that way. It costs people their careers. Um, there's litigation, both criminal and civil. You're raked up and down the media, um, you know, in some of these that have taken place uh, recently, even our own officers have been uh, severely um, and heavily criticized and chastised, and uh, people don't know all of the facts. St. John says beyond those facts, two questions always come up. First, why didn't the officers wound the suspect? And secondly, why so many shots? Many times uh, people are shot and they can still function. And certainly people can function with a, uh, with a leg uh, wound. Really, the only time you, you really will stop a threat immediately is if you hit something vital in the central nervous system. Uh, but short of that, there's a period of time in there that even if somebody is mortally wounded, they still have the ability to, uh, to act and react. This is about finding options. And if someone has a deadly force weapon, then we're going to always meet deadly force or deadly force. It's irrelevant how many shots were fired. Um, it, it's what's relevant is, is we have to stop the threat.
if it's one, if it's five, if it's ten, as soon as it stops a threat. And at the end of the day, we're looking to stop the threat. Now, there are many aspects to these situations, and each is judged on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, the chief says if there's one thing he can tell the public, by all means, do what the officer says. If police are wrong, you could file a complaint or a lawsuit, but do not disobey a lawful order from a police officer and do not make actions that suggest you have a weapon.